Good morning everybody and welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and uh, click the like button and uh, please share my videos. It does help me quite a bit and uh, I want my channel to work. I'm going on almost two months so uh, every little bit helps and God bless you for doing that. Uh, across the nation there's a massive pushback happening against far-left policies. These policies have made the country less safe and less affordable. Growing numbers of Americans are concerned about what the future of the nation looks like if Democrats continue holding on to power. Across America, Democrat candidates are seeing many of the leads they had over Republican candidates decline. Then there are the GOP candidates who have always maintained their leads. In Oregon, uh, a Republican Christine Drazen is running to be the next governor of the state. She also recently got a major boost from uh, Nike, Nike co-founder Phil Knight. High stakes election. If Drazen wins her election against Democrat opponent Tina Kotick, K-O-T-E-K, Kotick, this would be the first time Oregon has a Republican governor in nearly 40 years. Knight's one million donation to Dranzen's campaign comes as she already enjoys a slight lead over Kotek. With more money in her war chest, Dranzen will be able to reach more voters and increase her likelihood of winning the race. The election boils down to one question. Are you better off than you were four years ago? If the answer is no, then it's time for a new direction. The donation from the Nike co-founder comes as he apparently has a vest, vested interest in keeping Kotek from becoming Oregon's next governor. Before Knight uh, donated to Dranzen, he also donated to independent Oregon candidate Betsy Johnson. As Dranzen campaigns for office, she's committed to a platform that will increase public safety, improve statewide education, and reduce living costs in Oregon. A change from the status quo. While Drazen runs for the governor's mansion, she's letting Oregon residents know of all that's at stake in this election. This particular governor's race ultimately comes down to turning a new page and simply having more of the same leadership. Drazen also wants the people of Oregon to know that Kotek manages to become Oregon's next governor. She'll simply be another version of Governor Kate Brown, Democrat. We're on the brink of history here in Oregon. We can't afford four more years of Kate Brown's agenda with Tina Kotek. It's time for a new direction. With weeks left, time will determine how big a difference Knight's donation makes, whether or not Oregon voters choose to elect Dranzen, Drazen will also speak to how fed up Americans are with left-wing leaders being the ones in charge. And as it stands today, neither Kotek nor other Democrats running for office this year have demonstrated even the slightest willingness to adapt and meet the needs of the American people. Isn't that the truth? That is the truth. Republicans, on the other hand, seem more willing to show up and do work. Well, here's another one uh, from Mexico. <clears throat> Mexico crime crisis has just reached new dangerous heights. Well, not too long ago, Mexico tried to sue American gun manufacturers. The nation south of us did this on the baseless arguments that U.S. guns are being trafficked into Mexico and causing problems. Unfortunately, Mexico has a far bigger fish to fry than American gun makers. For starters, cartels are running the show, with many Mexican residents scared to leave their homes at night. That comes at top of the Mexican law enforcement officers being bought off by gangs. As it stands today, there's no telling when Mexico will get ahead of its crime crisis. 
Despite having some of the tightest gun control laws in the world, the nation's cartels are somehow always armed. Now this has taken a new turn as armed cartel members kidnap the mayor of Mexican border state, along with the mayor's family and employees. A nasty turn of events. This past Friday, Guerrero Cojule, Cojulia, Mayor Mario Cedelo was taken by the cartels after coming back from a work meeting. On the way back, Cedelo, his wife, son, and staffers found themselves surrounded by armed men and SUVs. Following the kidnapping, the governor of Cojulia confirmed that he and his team were working with the Mexican military and other officials to find the whereabouts of the Cedelio and others captured with him. Oh my God. And the governor of the border state of Cojulia announced that release of the mayor of a small northern Mexican town and a group of eight local officials who have been kidnapped by armed men on Saturday. Mario Cedelio Infati, uh, the mayor of Guerrero, Colajulia, and eight other people were taken by armed men. Ahead of this kidnapping, cartels abducted, abducted other individuals in Mexico who were leaving an art show. Before that, day laborers were also taken by the cartels. The issues with gangs in Mexico have prevailed for years on end. It does not appear as though Mexican officials have any serious plan to stop these cartels and ensure the safety of the people in the country. Wake up call for America. The reality of cartels running to show in Mexico is all the more reason why the United States needs secure borders. As long as the border is wide open and riddled with gaps, dangerous cartel members can easily waltz right in. As long as Mexican drug cartels have optional control of the border, the U.S., especially Texas, will continue to be a victim of chaos. Border states like Texas Arizona are working hard to secure the perimeter, yet they're repeatedly running into problems from the Biden administration that doesn't want to cooperate. Ooh. I just took a deep breath. The chaos and crime that are just part of everyday life in Mexico is what the United States could soon look like if border security isn't taken seriously. Why does Biden want us to go through this? Or anybody go through this? That's the question, isn't it? What if they got up their sleeves? I just can't imagine. Can you can't imagine. I'll be back. God bless, and you are a blessing.